Welcome to Effector from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is the audio edition of EFF's email newsletter geared towards keeping you on the bleeding edge of your digital rights. Check the show notes for links to all of our stories. This is Effector Volume 33, Issue 7, titled Apple Will Retract Some Harmful Phone Scanning. This issue was published on Friday, November 18th, 2021, and I'm your host, Member Outreach Assistant Christian Romero. Let's start with some top features. First up, Apple has listened and will retract some harmful phone scanning. Since August, EFF and others have been telling Apple to cancel its new child safety plans. Apple is now changing its tune about one component of its plans. The Messages app will no longer send notifications to parent accounts. That's good news. As we've previously explained, this feature would have broken end-to-end encryption in Messages, harming the privacy and safety of its users. We're glad to see that Apple has listened to privacy and child safety advocates about how to respect the rights of youth. In addition, sample images shared by Apple show the text in the feature has changed from sexually explicit to naked, a change that LGBTQ plus rights advocates have asked for, as the phrase sexually explicit is often used as a cover to prevent access to LGBTQ plus material. Now, Apple needs to take the next step and stop its plans to scan photos uploaded to a user's iCloud photo library for child sexual abuse images, also known as CSAM. Apple must draw the line at invading people's private content for the purposes of law enforcement. Next up, police can't demand you reveal your phone passcode, then tell a jury you refused. The Utah Supreme Court is the latest stop in EFF's roving campaign to establish your Fifth Amendment right to refuse to provide your passcode to law enforcement. Along with the ACLU, we filed an amicus brief in State v. Valdez, arguing that the constitutional privilege against self-incrimination prevents the police from forcing suspects to reveal the contents of their minds. That includes revealing a memorized passcode or directly entering the passcode to unlock a device. As we write in the brief, the state cannot compel a suspect to recall and share information that exists only in his mind. And for our last announcement, EFF's How to Fix the Internet podcast offers optimistic solutions to tech dystopias. It seems like everywhere we turn, we see dystopian stories about technology's impact on our lives and our futures. From tracking-based surveillance capitalism to street-level government surveillance, to the dominance of a few large platforms choking innovation to the growing pressure by authoritarian governments to control what we see and say. The landscape can feel bleak. Exposing and articulating these problems is important, but so is envisioning and then building a better future. That's where our new podcast comes in. You can listen to How to Fix the Internet with EFF Cindy Cohen and Special Advisor Danny O'Brien wherever you get podcasts. And if you like it, please let us know. The new season of How to Fix the Internet is made possible with the support of the Alfred P. Sloan's Foundation Program in Public Understanding of Science and Technology. All right, now we've got some EFF updates. Honoring Elliot Harmon, EFF Activism Director, Poet, Friend, from 1981 to 2021. It is with heavy hearts that we mourn and celebrate our friend and colleague, Elliot Harmon who passed away peacefully following a lengthy battle with melanoma. We will deeply miss Elliot's clever mind, powerful pen, generous heart, and expansive kindness. We will carry his memory with us in our work. Next up, Apple's self-service repair program must live up to its promises. The right to repair movement got a boost this week when Apple announced a new program, Self-Service Repair that will let people buy genuine Apple parts and tools to make some of their own repairs to limited Apple products, such as newer iPhones and some Macs. Apple's announcement shows that there's been a considerable pressure on the company to change its designs and policy to answer consumer demand for the right to repair. Let's keep it up and keep them on the right track. Next, after Facebook leaks, here's what should come next. For the last month, Facebook has been at the center of a lengthy damaging news cycle brought on by the release of thousands of pages of leaked documents sent both to Congress and news outlets by former Facebook data scientist Francis Haugen. That's good, but it's high time to turn public outrage into meaningful action that will rein in the company. 
but it's equally important that the solutions be tailored carefully to solve the actual issues that need to be addressed. Here's where EFF believes Congress and the US government could make a serious impact. Next, crowdsourced suspicion apps are out of control. Technology rarely invents new societal problems. Instead, it digitizes them, supersizes them, and allows them to balloon and duplicate at the speed of light. That's exactly the problem we've seen with location-based, crowdsourced, public safety apps like Citizen. And for our last update, face recognition isn't just face identification and verification, it's also photo clustering, race analysis, real-time tracking, and more. Governments and corporations are tracking how we go about our lives with a unique marker that most of us cannot hide or change, our own faces. Across the country, communities are pushing back with laws that restrain this dangerous technology. In response, some governments and corporations are claiming that these laws should only apply to some forms of face recognition, such as face identification, and not to others, such as face clustering. We disagree. This post explores many of the various kinds of face recognition and explains why all must be addressed by laws. All right, and now we've got some events. Cyper Session 2021, Holiday Buyer's Guide. Join Cyper Collective, a grassroots group participating in the Electronic Frontier Alliance, on Saturday, November 20th, to talk about some general tools and thoughts for buying these fancy items, including what's out there, what to look for, and what to be aware of. Bread and Net, a global reimagining of the Santa Clara principles on transparency and accountability in content moderation. On November 24th, EFF's Jillian York and David Green will present the results of a year-long consultation reimagining of the Santa Clara principles on transparency and accountability in content moderation. Next, the kids are, kinda, alright, San Diego Comic Con. If you're at Comic-Con, stop by for a panel with EFF Special Advisor Corey Doctorow on November 28th at 1.30pm for a discussion of coming of age while dealing with ghosts, identity, destiny, and choices and consequences. And now we've got some job openings. First up, Media Relations Director. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is looking for a Media Relations Director to facilitate EFF's relationships with news gatherers around the world. The ideal candidate is someone who has experience with journalists and journalism, either in public relations or as a journalist. And for our final opening, Staff Attorney, Patent Experience. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is looking for a litigator who is excited about fostering digital creativity, justice, and innovation to join our legal team. Ideal candidates will have substantial experience in patent litigation and policy plus experience with copyright, trademark, or trade secret issues. And finally, we've got a couple mini-links. First up, Vienna's museums are moving their censored nude images to OnlyFans. This one comes from QZ.com. Vienna's art museums have started using OnlyFans after experience removals of nude art by Facebook and other platforms. And for our final mini-link, Missouri Governor vows to prosecute St. Louis Post-Dispatch for reporting security vulnerability. A St. Louis Post-Dispatch reporter discovered a vulnerability on the Missouri State Education website that exposed social security numbers of 100,000 teachers, but Missouri's governor, apparently knowing nothing about the law and even less about technology, called this a hack and says he will seek to prosecute. That one came from KrebsNonSecurity.com. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to sign up for the email version of Effector, which includes links to in-depth coverage of these stories and more. You can see past issues and subscribe at EFF.org slash Effector. That's EFF.org slash E-F-F-E-C-T-O-R. Before we end this newsletter, I just want to let you know that EFF is a member-supported nonprofit organization and you can help us protect digital privacy, security, and free expression for everyone. Donate to EFF today and even grab a bit of gear by heading over to EFF.org effect. That's EFF.org EFFECT. 
You can become a member for as little as $25 or even sign up as a monthly or annual donor. Thank you again for your support and I hope you'll join us for the next issue of Effector.